Alrighty, it's Sunday, March 4th, 2012, and it is just a little past noon. And it's time for Comments X. Welcome back, folks. Yes, it's been a long day since I saw you yesterday. Well, actually, it was pretty cool. Uh, yesterday, uh, I was able to get uh, a full day of production and everything worked to the point where I was able to publish uh, episode the pilot episode of uh, Cyborgs and Cybernetics is out. Uh, the second episode of the Series Zero for Ubuntu BSD Unix Atal is out. Uh, for those of you who are interested in Linux and particularly uh, want to see things from the angle from, from an angle of a developer if you're considering uh, open source development this is the show for you. Uh, it is not a review show. It is not, uh, uh, you know, a, a product review show. It, 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 you know, it sticks specifically with the issues surrounding uh, Linux development, and it's going to follow uh, basically my development experiences in there, and, and I take this from the perspective. Uh, I do development from the perspective of of an astronomer in astrophysics in terms of how I gather my information. You'll see how I put my information together. I don't make any claims of being a guru. Uh, I'm not the best coder out there. Uh, I do need, uh, you know, on, on a regular basis, cheat, seat, cheat sheets and stuff like that. And most of my work is trial and error. And I, I will be, you know, I don't have, I don't think that uh, I've got tons of money because I don't, that's why I have a freaking lifestyle. I don't have a lot of money. I do enjoy what I'm doing, but I don't have a lot of money, uh, and so basically, uh, uh, when you watch what's going on, the production that's going on this channel, what you need to realize is this is <laughs> the this production that's going on on a daily basis. That you'll start seeing now. I should be producing uh, videos on a daily basis now. This this is what I was aiming at, and this is what happened Saturday as I was able to put together a daily. Uh, uh, video production uh, system and I did it all uh, freaking based everything is either <laughs> refurbished <laughs> hacked or in some way or another mangled and, and, and manipulated there is nothing uh, that you'll see in this channel that's really bought that's brand new I really don't have the money to buy brand new, and from my experiences, because I'm willing to tinker with things, including stuff in my machine shop, that I'll be showing you later on as things develop, uh, everything's sort of, I don't know, I get it cheap because it, 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 if you don't mind fixing and upgrading things yourself, then uh, you don't have, you can spend less you can spend about about 50 percent of if you instead of buying brand new if you did the freaking lifestyle you can cut your expenses by 50 percent at least if not more uh i'll be showing you as i uh, i'll be getting fixing up so i can do video production in the kitchen i have a kitchen uh here I'm still fixing up the kitchen so I can do video production in there. That's going to be another room that's going to be uh, added to video production. So I can show you some of the stuff that I make in terms of the food. Uh, the reason why I want to show you this type of stuff, and this is going to be for uh, the news and economics channel, but also be for, uh, for uh, the space program in terms of uh, developing and designing food that would go into outer space. Uh, and be for a space program uh, that you can actually without spending a lot of money you can cut your costs significantly I mean I, I get an example is that you can go if you went out and spent ten dollars on the meal 
and most of the meal is that, that you know, let's say a, a, sa a sub sandwich like this on an Ita on, on, a, on Italian bread, right? And it's about about a little mo little more than six inches. It's you know the the standards uh, uh, we we'll call the mini baguettes, and you put a uh, good ham on there, good roast beef, what you know, whatever your your cured meats are that the 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 cold they call cold cuts. Uh, cold cuts are essentially cured meats. If you know how to cure your own meats, and you can do this, and I, I have a rinky dink little, uh, 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 it was, it's basically uh, an enhanced toaster oven. And it's nothing fancy. The dials on it aren't fancy. They're, they're the old analog uh, stuff on there. Sometimes analog is better than digital for certain things. And in this case, uh, analog works just fine. Uh, there's no complications with it, and I can use it to cure my own meat. And I can get, oh, five pounds or or well, just about two kilograms. I mean, imagine bought how much you would actually have to spend if you bought if you bought cold cuts that were this big, right? Take take the, the, the link to the here. Cold cuts were this big in terms of that went from my shoulder from one shoulder to the other shoulder, right? Imagine you bought that much cold cuts, how much it would cost. Now consider that you can do that much cold cuts, you can cure a piece of meat like that for about thirteen dollars. And if you if you store things properly and you've got the right refrigeration that ten, thirteen dollars that you spent will last you two months. So that's w you know the 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 cooking that I'll be bringing up is is more along the freegan style of thing. It, it's it's but it's it's again it's not going to be what, what most people would, would, would consider because uh, I learned my stuff not from uh, the 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 vegan stuff or or, or these other freegan freegan. Um, uh, environment. Most of my freaking stuff actually doesn't come from doesn't come from the free, freaking community. It comes from uh, my old my old my older Greek uncles, who basically were self sufficient. They learned how to do all this stuff because this is the way things that were done in the village. So this is more of a I guess you would call it a, an adoption of the village lifestyle in, in an urban setting. That's this is what it particularly is. These are the old village ways, and I'm just sort of saying, I'm sort of just using them now uh, because you're able to save a lot of money. And where other uh, research firms and um, or I should say research institutes are collapsing and having to shut, uh, you know, really scale back what they're doing, uh, I can keep trudging ahead because I simply don't have the overhead that they do. So I, I you know. I can I can do close to a thousand dollars worth of research on a dollar. That's the primary difference between uh, the big research institutes that have billions of dollars coming in and myself is we're doing the same research, same quality of research. Is that my my costs are significantly less. So. Uh, uh, you will be seeing uh, the, the the cooking will probably won't be for another month or so. Uh, I need do need to get uh, the it will be physics TV will be starting up this this uh, week. Uh, I'll be doing more work on the Omega Construct. Uh, I'll also be launching uh, uh, INN the the, in, the Internet News Network this week. That's also going to be launching. Uh, I should uh, have uh, two. I'm just going to do the one for now. I'm going to do something known as Media Watch. And for those of you who are interested in geopolitics, uh, and geopolitics is kind of necessary for the way I ended up uh, doing my research because a lot of the stuff that I do, particularly in, in astronomy and physics, can uh, overlaps into uh, what we call the military industrial sciences. Like a number of the people that I came up with at UFT uh, ended up when they finished 
ended up going into the U.S. military. So if you have that quality, and this is where mo most of the physics, most of the, uh, a lot of the astronomy is very closely tied to the U.S. military or to, to, or to a, mil to a military um, budget uh, because a large chunk of the equipment can be used for either the scientific purposes or the military purposes. And, and because of this, uh, there is a very close sort of symbiotic relationship between actual physics, you know, and uh, and the military. This same thing could be said for certain types of uh, psychology, particularly in the behavior sciences and in uh, chemistry, but to even in, in more specifically towards uh, the what we call biochemistry. And there, uh, you can sort of sub subcategorize it, where the military is interested, in, particularly in terms of biological weapons, uh, as opposed to chemical weapons. Uh, they would look at; they would be primar primarily interested in the areas of uh, microbiology and virology. Virology is the study of viruses, and. Uh, if anyone who has any idea about uh, biological warfare, then bio you need to know that biological warfare uh, is an extension of virology. And you really don't need that high tech of a lab to really do uh, bio warfare and vi virology. The Russians did this and have an enormous amount of work on this. Uh, and their labs were pretty, uh, you know, by uh, uh, U.S. standards, they were pretty low tech. So that kind of gives you an idea of uh, what capacities are, depending on who your scientists are. That, you know, it, it, it's not about ne it's not necessarily about the equipment so much. It's about more about your scientists uh, and what your scientists can do, the capacity of your scientists. So, today is going to be the second day of video production. Uh, we'll see what we can get out today. Uh, I will be readjusting and re-sorting my uh, uh, schedules. Typically, most of the videos that are produced today, like, like if it, things that are produced on Sunday, will be more or less uh, visible from Monday, the day after. But basically. All the uploading is done at night, usually around between 10 and midnight. All the uploading to YouTube is done then. And then from there on out, things are sort of dis disseminated, you know, throughout the internet uh, the following day and so on and so forth. So, so I'm going to see what we can get done today. I want to see uh, what I can get done during this. This is going to sort of be a... Yesterday was to see whether I could get uh, the production working on a regular basis. Now, let's see how far I can push it. How much can actually be done. So, and I think I've got, the, the, the funny thing is I got, I didn't think it was going to work as well as it was going to work. I've got the network doing the rendering now. So, I can have a system free. See, what happens is, for people who don't know about video production, there is two, the two of the longest components where that can really lock you up is rendering and uploading. Both rendering and uploading can easily take anywhere from an hour to three hours, if not longer. Right? So the minimum time you're looking at for rendering is, a min is an hour. Uh, if, you get, if you get away with two hours, you're lucky. But it could be longer than that. And this is why you save the rendering and everything else to the end of the day, and you do things in batches. It's done in a, in a sort of like a, in a batch. Uh, now, this, if, if, uh, if you're doing this, and you want to do it, uh, you know, you want to have things ready and sort of queued up, then you can't have 
the rendering and the uploading lock up once lock up and lock up the main system you're working on. You need to sort of shunt it off to a subsystem that does this. And so, well, it's doing its work. You can go on and do something else, right? So you're not backing up your day. And this is sort of how I've got things worked out now, where I can schedule in the video, the the rendering and the uploading. And it's not going to detract from uh, the amount of work I can get done during the day. So what I'll be working on today is a large chunk of the efficiency. I want to try to, you know, week day by day for this week, try to get more and more done to see what type of what type of what type of video production schedule I can get in there. Because uh, I said that this goes back to why I set up the way I set up. Rather than publishing papers, I want to start publishing videos during the documentaries. Uh, this is going to be the primary uh, shift. This is the other shift from the old writing standard to the new standard, the new video standard. Uh, a lot of the notes and practices will be handled on the individual channels like uh, the Bass Institute, uh, Space API, uh, and even uh, the this, this Cyborg Alpha channel here, uh, which will have this in its various playlists, will be part of, will be the show. The shows are in the playlists. So the channels aren't, aren't necessarily channels, they're networks, and shows will be in the playlists. The main documentaries will always come out on Physics TV, and the practice and everything, all the, sort of the the bits and pieces that will eventually go into the show, into the documentaries, will always be on the side channels. So basically, you can view the, view the side channels or networks as uh, my lab books. From my lab books, things will be distilled into the documentaries. What's going to go into the documentary? I know I don't know. A lot of times I, I, you know, I always think of things in different ways every time I approach it. So what's going to come out as I come down to the documentary will be depending on what I'm thinking about at that particular time. And just because I put up one documentary doesn't mean I'm not going to go back and redo the documentary if I have new information or I want to present it in a different way to present to, to bring out a different point of view. So I'm not only looking at the content, I'm not only looking at the content, but I'm also looking at the document from the f from from the point of view and perspective. If I can present different perspectives for the documentary, uh, this is going to be something that's good. Because this is what rarely ever happens on documentaries and documentary. You don't really get a variety of different views, you get one specific view, or a documentary tries in, in, in his ways to be balanced, tries to be uh, nice and, and, and courteous to everybody. This isn't going to do that. This is going to, my doc documentaries are going to be looking at the truth, but looking at it, but not only just simply looking at the raw truth, but looking at how people see things. So rather than having the documentary sort of split up in sort of jumping back and forth, uh, although sometimes that will happen depending on how I want to present the arguments. Uh, I will take a good look, not only at what people are thinking, but why they think what, the way they think. So this is what's going to come out in the docs. Uh, and today uh, I begin uh, my first full day uh, in the new offices, in the new, uh, in the new video production schedule. So I will see you out on the internet. Uh, I will try to do some more surfing today uh, as, I, as, as uh, I get into and used to the uh, uh, the new production schedule. So uh, YouTube, fellow YouTubers, you will see me around.